y'all that are tuning in, uh, God bless you. Good morning. Uh, this is not how I had my Sunday uh, planned either. <laughs> but you know what? God is still good. I hope you're all warm. I hope you've got a phone or a computer that you can watch us online. And the church body is going to be as one as always. Uh, you know, every time I say this, but it's still true. Uh, I've worked on this all week, and it's... Uh, you know, and then God changed my mind, and uh, he's given me so so little here, so that means he's going to be doing the message, and that's what we always want, and I don't know who I'm preaching to, and from, from the three different points I've got, I'm preaching to me. Uh, we're in Ephesus, uh, yes, Ephesians chapter 5, and the first one, in fact, chapter 5 is grieving the Holy Spirit. The second one is that we are to be children of the light. And the third one is, in order for us to be children of the light, that we have to be spirit-filled believers. Now, this is God's word completely, as we know the Bible is. That God uses men and women to parlay his message to other people. Um, all of us at one time have been broken people. What I mean by that is that, you know, we're all different backgrounds in our testimony and our, our, our walk with Jesus Christ. And, but it, it's different as how we got to know him in circumstances of our lives. And he uses that too. I don't not believe in any luck. I don't believe in accidents. That's um, things I believe that God uses us in our circumstances to impact others for his kingdom. For instance, uh, Paul was a zealot. He um, went after Christians. He, he ordered the killing of Stephen, the first martyr in Christianity. At the same time, Paul thought that he was doing a service to God, a service to God. Uh, he was a Jew, a devout Jew, a very educated man, an upright man in the Jewish community. And it took Jesus Christ to blind him and throw him down on the ground, literally. And explain to him, your life's going to change. And he said, who are thou, Lord? He said, I am the one that you've persecuted, Paul. And it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. So don't fight it. Go with it. Let's see what God's got for us this morning. Uh, and, and again, I'm sorry about the snow, but you know that's God's plan too. So I hope a lot of people are turning in. Uh, I know some of the visitors, you know, I've tried to get hold of all of them that I thought were coming and uh, some new people too. So, you know, um, we just keep going on for God and God is good and God is good all the time. Thank you, Lord, for what he's done in our church and our lives and our family's lives. Let's pray. Father, we do love you, Lord. And we, we come to this uh, uh, next chapter in the series that we're doing studying you, God, and how, how people are looking at and the church looking at uh, what our purpose in these times, and we, we started off with parents and moms and dads, and, and, and that we fall under complete providence of God. We, we, we love you, Lord. We know that you have our best interest in hand, and that no matter what the situation is, the uh, persecuting, uh, the adversity, the, the troubled times, Lord, that you've made us especially for this time. I believe it. I know it. We love you. Thank you, God, for all you do for us and pray for us. Be, be with us, God, as we read your word. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, it's been a great week, an exciting week. We've had, um, I want to share with you some things God has done and in our church and around. Um, and let me start off with the uh, with some of the, the hurtful things that's happened so that you'll appreciate and, and I'll have you remember the good things last. We had an old time member of the church. His wife's in the hospital in really, really bad shape. Uh, pray for that family. God knows. God knows. There's another part of our church family that are struggling with some family issues. Uh, God knows that prayer request too. However, however, uh, God has got uh, a man that's been on the respirator for three weeks that just sent me a text this morning and said, Hello, Pastor Mike. Thanks for praying for me. Thank the church. You know who it is? Praise God. Sitting in his chair, cut down, almost ready to get off that respirator. 
and the pneumonia is almost gone. But he's contacting us, so praise God for that. Uh, uh, one of our senior members is, is doing better with this COVID. Uh, two of them have avoided it uh, completely, even though they were in contact with people. Praise God for that. Uh, there's four of our young church family and family members of members that have had this COVID in their house. Uh, so far, everyone's coming back and being healthy. A little lingering effects, yes. Uh, my friend also is coming back from this COVID. God, God reigns. God reigns. He, he's got, he's got plans for all of us here, and I, I just praise His wonderful name. It tells me uh, when you call and tell me that you miss church, how much God is working. He's putting a desire for you to be in God's house, for you to hear God's word, and it and it's just it's just absolutely wonderful. So there's some good things that come out of these bad times. You see what I mean? Yeah, God's got a purpose. Next week we're going to find out what God's purpose and what God does in adversity and suffering and trying time. You know, I heard somebody tell me uh, a long time ago, and they quoted uh, Paul too. It says. And uh, whether I live or die, it is my gain. Now, <clears throat> you young people, you're not going to understand this, you know, because it, it takes patience and experience and uh, to, to learn this. But as you get older, the Lord just, just does something in us that makes us a little more longing for home. The first thing he does is... Some of our family members are with him. Now, when you get my age, you have more family members that are, are gone, but in heaven with the Lord Jesus. So, Mike, where's your heart? Well, my heart's still here on, on earth because God's got something for us to do. I've got kids. I've got a grandbaby. I've got a daughter getting married. I have a, my little beautiful granddaughter. Uh, and he's just not through. If you're still here, God's not through with you. So get up. Get moving. Be children of his. Make him proud. Read his word. Pray to him. Talk to him. Don't treat him like a stranger. We love you. And let's get started with God's word. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Now, since we're not having music, and oh, I do miss that. Music is the, uh, the eye of the soul. It primes us for worship. And if we go to church or whether we're here, we need to be worshiping God, not a single person on earth, no one, no party, no anything but God. And Paul's talking about idols in this chapter 5 of Ephesians. You say, well, why did you start with chapter 5? Because that's when the instructions to this church is, when he's writing letters to Ephesus about the Ephesians that are in church. It's not a bad church. It's a good church. Every church has issues. Why? Because there's people that go to church there. Amen? Right. Right. It's not God. It's the people. It's us that come in there with issues. Uh, so it says, be, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now, he doesn't call everybody children. When the word children, and I've had people argue with me about this, that it, we're all children of God. We're all creations of God. God loves everyone he has made. But to be He's talking about children as in family children, adoption, church family, God's children. He's talking about saved people that know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Verse 2, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. So he's talking about Christ and Christ loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. So he's talking about Jesus Christ's death and sacrifice for our sins which is what makes us children of God. It's, it's yes, it's ABCs. It's admit, believe, and confess. And, but it's Jesus that does all the work, and it's us that believe and accept. Three says, but here we go. Talking about grieving some Holy Spirit. These are some bad behaviors. But fornication and all uncleanliness, covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. This has got no place in the church, none of this. And you say, well, Mike, we all sin. Yeah, I know, but it don't need to be the pattern of our life. You say, well, well, God can forgive everything. He can forgive everything that we ask him to forgive if we're saved children of God. 
But first, we've got to be saved, all right? Amen. Don't, don't ever think that it's about anything we do and our good works. Our good works follow after, after we ask the Lord Jesus to save us. Four says, neither filthiness nor foolish talking, jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Again, coming back to worship. When the music plays and the people sing, um, you know, I hear the words, I, I feel the spirit, you feel the spirit, and, and your smiles, and, and it's, it's just a time we give thanks to God. When people sing, we thank God for the talent he gave this person. When people play uh, the piano wonderfully, we give God thanks for having that person be obedient to the Lord and play that wonderful music and the talent he gave us. If you've got a talent, if you've got a gift, if you've got anything great in your life that comes from the God on high, our Heavenly Father, and that's who we give the praise and glory to and the honor and our total worship. Five says, For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. It's talking about a lifestyle. This is not talking about a singular mistake. This is not talking about the saint that walks and he steps in a hole. We should pick that person up, that woman, that man, try to restore them to the, the cross. This is talking about someone that has not been saved. For this ye you know that no whoremonger or unclean person covetous and an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. This is a verse that goes along with what Jesus said to them, depart for I never knew you. That is one of the scariest sentences in the whole Bible when Jesus says, depart from me for I never knew you. Whew. Again, grieving the Holy Spirit, let's don't do this for and you say, well, so Mike, if I see it every once in a while, it's okay with God. No, no, it's not okay with God. Your, your heart should hurt that you've embarrassed the King of Kings, that you've hurt the feelings of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you've, been, you've had a speck of dirt on the church of God that, 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 that Jesus died for. So your conscience should be your guide. No, sin's never okay. Do we do it? Yes, but we shouldn't enjoy doing it. We shouldn't keep doing it and doing it and doing it. There should be some remorse. There should be some depth of feeling. There should be some love of God. There should be some spirit inside of us that says, oh, you've hurt your wonderful heavenly father. Are you trying to mock the blood of Jesus? God forbid that. I know that's not in your heart. I'm telling you what the Bible said. I want you to remember this. Six, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Let me read this last part one more time. Because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. This ain't you. This is children of the devil right here, children of the devil. If you're saved, praise God for it. If you've accepted Jesus Christ and he's stripped the blinders off of your eyes and unclotted your ears so that you can hear the truth, God's word, praise God for it. You're blessed. I'm thankful that you're obedient, that you answered the call, that you used your free will to acknowledge and accept who God really is. And that's the king of the universe our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit that indwells us when we accept what Jesus did for us. And we give him his place, and that's number one. Nothing should come before Jesus Christ. Absolutely nothing before God and Jesus Christ. That makes it an idol anytime that happens. It says here in verse 7, Be not ye therefore partakers with him. Okay, so... The first point was grieving the Holy Spirit. And we say, oh, I'm a strong Christian. Man, you have no idea. Who are you talking to? I've been a Christian for 50 years. Man, you know, you don't, you, you know, you don't tell me anything. Hey, I'm telling you what God's word said. It says be careful because before you know it, sin's going to enter your life. And sin I found out in my life, and I try to tell the young people, it comes in and you don't recognize it. And it digs a hole and it always stays longer than you ever wanted it to. And it's harder to get rid of than you ever imagined it would. 
it don't go away easy all the time, does it, Charlie? Are there consequences to sin? Oh, yeah. There's consequences. You usually hurt yourself always. If not yourself, you hurt somebody else. Amen. Think about it. Think about it when you sin. And you're always hurting God because sin is an enmity to God. Jesus died to end our, our uh, condemnation of sin, but still it hurts God when we sin. I'm glad that you're missing church. It tells me that, that God's working in our church. Uh, I, I'm glad that people are just stepping up. Man, life, people doing all kind of work at the church, people visiting hearts, uh, growing for the Lord. I can, I can see it on the faces during church. I can hear it in your voice. I hear it from other people, what you're doing. Uh, visitors every Sunday, uh, you know, eight, eight or ten. Uh, it, it, we, we don't take credit for this. This is God moving because we're being obedient. Because we're doing things the way God wants us to, okay? And giving him the praise and the glory. And we need to be really, really selfish about how we do that and make sure God always gets the glory. That's never about just one or about five or ten. It's not even about the 40, 40 or 45. It's about the one, Jesus Christ. And if you're visiting with us and you've been there two or three months, we don't consider you a visitor anymore. You're part of the family. You're part of the family. Uh, and thank you for coming. I, I want to share this with you. Everybody always thinks that these are just terrible times. And, oh, Mike, you're, you're scaring the young people, you know, that you're, you're telling them how bad this time is. Well, I think I just told you how good this time is, too. Uh, in, in difficult times, there's more opportunity. What do you mean there's more opportunity in difficult times? Very rarely do we get on our knees and cry out to God when things are going just absolutely peachy. When things are fine as frog hair. We don't turn to the God of the universe. I hope we do. I hope we say just a little, thank you, Lord, for the blessings you give us when we go outside and see this beautiful sunshine. It's melting away the snow that was there two hours before. Mm. When we see beauty in the earth, even all creation cries out for the Lord our God. How about the ones made in his own image? How much more should we cry out in praise, glory, honor, and power to the one who died for us, who made us? We, we we just never quit. We should never quit. This is a rough time. There's people dying around us. It's nothing to take lightly, this thing, this virus. No, 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 no. Be careful. People in our church, it's getting close. Oh, it's getting close. How would you like to live in Europe in the 1300s? For 300 years, something called the Black Plague came in. It killed 60% of the population in all of Europe. It killed 50 million people. Now you say, well, well, Mike, that's that's nothing compared to today because we've got 360 million. Nothing in the United States if 50 million people die. How about if I told you this, that the whole population of the earth at that time or civilization was 90 million. So you're telling me 60% of the people die. How did it get in? It got in there with rats and the fleas that are in rats. It's some kind of a, weird bacteria that came on there and the reason it was called the black death now i'm in good you need to hear the bad sometimes to appreciate the good uh they called it the black death because it created diarrhea vomiting blood uh, out of every orifice in your body you can think of eyes nose mouth when blood gets old what does it do it turns dark the blood also would go under the skin so the people's flesh would get would die, would die and turn black. It would turn black. Now, the rats were black, but the reason they called it the black plague was because it would make people's fingers and toes and stuff and gangrene sit in. If people didn't live long with this plague, it was three to five days. It lasted hundreds and hundreds of years. How did it stop? Well, here's how it stopped in London in 1666. There was a great fire that burned out all the center of London. Killed people. Also killed the rats and the fleas that was causing bubonic plague. They had a reprieve for that. Now, I could go on and on and tell you of the different things. Uh, 1500s, it was cholera. 1700s, it was the smallpox. We wiped out almost all of the Native American population, South America and North America, because of smallpox. Why? Because the Europeans had grown some immunity to it over the hundreds of years, but not the Indians, not the Native Americans. 
The Spanish flu in 1908 took out tens of thousands and thousands of people. World War I, World War II. Here's a few facts just of World War II, and I'm going to get back to God's Word. World War II, there was nine million people, nine million Jews that were killed, most put in gas chambers, shot, burned, whatever, in, in, in Holocaust. What a travesty. Here's something that's not as well known. 11 million Russians were killed. Most of them, or a lot of them, were political prisoners under Stalin, who was a horrible dictator that killed his own people because he disagreed with them. Men are not good all the time. We've got an old nature. Now, if you'll pop back and you'll go back to chapter 4 in Ephesians, and God's Word, you'll find out that we still have a work to do because we're one body and we're one spirit and we're not to be afraid. Cautious, yes, but don't be afraid even in times like this because God still sits on the throne. I remember when John F. Kennedy in 1963 was assassinated. I'm going to tell you some things that happened in my lifetime. 63, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. It wasn't but a few years later, I think five years later in 1968, when his brother Bobby Kennedy was assassinated. These were men that were wanting to get the country straightened back out. There was a lot of corruption, a lot of industrial complex corruption, political. Uh, he's assassinated. Same year Martin Luther King was assassinated. This is all in the 60s. Now, here I am, 11 or 12. I know I'm older than a lot of dirt. Here come the race riots, okay? Terrible. The peace riots because of Vietnam. Nixon, our president, had to resign. Uh, it didn't stop anything. There was violence because here comes segregation, here come integration, here came busing. Man, it was a scary time. Now, we've been kind of a reprieve up till the last... I don't know, four or four years or something. Uh, we, we haven't even had any foreign wars in the last couple of years. This country has not treated God right. They have not. They have grieved God. They've grieved God because this country was founded on God, no matter what the liberal media tells you. This country was founded on God. It was Christian principles. It was to protect us in our liberty to worship Jesus Christ and God that the Constitution was set up. Read it one time. Yeah, there's other bills in there. Yes, I understand that. But the basis for the Constitution was so that no government, no power could come in and say you can't worship. That's why all this stuff's getting overturned about the government trying to close churches. One from the Supreme Court just did this in liberal California said unconstitutional. You can't do that. Yes, there's some other problems in this country. I guarantee it. we got to get our right, okay? So let's get back to Bible and let's go here to verse 8 says this. Be careful how you walk. Don't fall in with them. Don't fall in with them. And it's easy to do. Be ye not therefore partakers with them. Verse 7, chapter 5. Here's how easy it is. Uh, a lot of the young people, a lot of the girls, they, they had this, uh, oh, man, you know, I've got kids coming up. Oh, my children. Yeah, I know. I know. It, it, it would be. But your kids are made for this time like we talked about a couple of weeks ago. So are you. God's with you. Now, it doesn't say that you can do this without God, but it says you can do this with God and always with God. He'll give you the strength. There's nothing new under the sun or that God doesn't know. I hope some of this proves to you. There's been, there's always been death. There's a risk to life. There is a risk to life. Every time you go out the door, there's a risk. But there's also a beauty and a love to life too. There's great things in this life. Wonderful things. This life is awesome a lot of the time. And then we have bad, bad times too. You know, we're up on the mountain. We're in the valley. And usually it's somewhere in between, isn't it? either coming up or going down, but, but we're sometimes in between. Hold the line. Be who God wants you to be. People people watch people. Uh, you know, and, 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 and they look at your faces and stuff, and I thought, well, um, I've been talking to people in, in outreach this week, and so I went to a place, and this girl, she just had her third baby. She's married, and 
um, friends of some five kids, and I said, hey, you know, let's just want to invite you and your husband and kids to church. Son, let me tell you something. You thought I'd hit that girl with a brick upside her head. She looked at me, she goes, like that. I'm sorry for weird faces, but anyhow, <laughs> I said, well, yeah, no, I said, you know, listen, we we love Jesus. You know, we'd be glad to have you. You know, you, you know, people should bring their children to church. I mean, that's just, that's true too, guys. And she said, well, well, you know, I, 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 I work, I work all the time. I said, well, you don't work here Sundays because we come here sometimes after church and to eat and, and, and then said, my husband works. I said, well, there's lots of women that bring their kids uh, with them. And I was joking with her, but not really. You know, if you're looking for an excuse not to serve God, there are plenty out there. Uh, the bad thing is that when we're talking about grieving the Holy Spirit is, you know, God calls and calls, and he's long-suffering, he's patient, but we should take advantage of times when we have to talk to people. Um, we should witness to people. We invite them. Um, I don't know if this girl's going to come to church. I seriously doubt it. But God can work anything. Now, he didn't tell us that we save because that's ridiculous, isn't it? No, only Jesus Christ saves people. What we do? Well, we, we, we water them and we can throw out the seed. And Sometimes we, God allows us to throw a little dirt around them. But, but it's always God that lets the sun shine on somebody's life. And I don't mean the S-U-N. I'm talking about the S-O-N. It's always God and it's always Jesus Christ that does the miracle work, the supernatural work, the changing of people's lives. He, he makes us children of the light. Don't get caught in a, a, a hole where you think that you're done doing anything for the Lord. Contrary to that, we just voted to put a, a sign up as we're going out the door, and I love it. I've seen it before, and it says, you are now entering your mission field. Uh, that's not just for me. That's for everybody that goes out to that church. I've seen the church coming alive. I've seen people just working, working, doing lights and doing all kinds of stuff, and they're praying and they're calling each other. It, it's just it's just awesome what God, God and God is doing. Okay. Verse 8 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Okay. What Paul's telling us, and we should have enough sense to know this, is that the, we're required to be in the world and to witness to the world. I, that should be our thing, is to witness to the lost. We, we come to church to worship Almighty God. We come to church to get recharged and, and get ready to do more for the, for the Lord but because he loved us so much. But, you know, you witness to somebody don't mean that you leave in your family and going to the bar till one or two in the morning and getting drunk. Uh, no, you can meet them for a cup of coffee and maybe the next morning or any time, take them out mm -hmm. to eat and, and talk to them about Jesus Christ. Uh, for crying out loud, it doesn't take long to tell them about Jesus. The grocery store works, drug store works, parking lot works. And, 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 and I do realize this, guys. You say, well, Mike, you're a big mouth. You talk, you, we all know you talk too much and you've even admitted that. Yeah, okay, I know everybody's different, but I don't see everybody you do. I don't come into contact with people you do. You know, I'll tell you, if, if you want me to go talk to somebody, I'll go with you. Uh, or I hope one of the deacons would do the same thing, but, or, or any, anyone, but they going to listen to you because they like you. They know you, they love you, they care about you. And what you say is important because hopefully they know that you care about them. People don't care what you know till they know you care. We can tell them what we know, but until they know we care, they don't want to listen like they, like, like they would. Amen? So we don't have to get down in the dirt with them to try to get them out of the dirt. Because I'll tell you this, it's a lot easier to do this. It's a lot easier to pull somebody down than it is to pull somebody up. You know, I got this thing, don't let gravity get you down. Don't let sin get you down. Don't get trapped in the sin of this world and let it pull you away from God. No, not a chance. Okay, so we're going to walk in light. We're going to light in light. Speak of these things which are done to them and say, but all things, verse 13, 
but all things that are reproved or made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is the light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Wake up, church! Wake up! It ain't over with yet. Man, don't hold your head down. Don't stop. Don't, don't do nothing. Uh, tell people about Jesus Christ. This is a good time to. Why? Because thing, bad things are happening right now. Uh, when you need help, that's when you need a Savior. Uh, they, they got a song, The Anchor Holds. Well, when you're in the water and somebody's throwing you anchor and you're sinking, you need somebody to help you with a helping hand get you out of that mess, don't you? Jesus did it for me. He's done it for everybody else that's been saved in that church in one way, shape, form, or fashion. He'll do it for everybody else. Don't minimize the power of God, the salvation power of God. That says way more about God and what you think of him than it does you, Okay. Who is God in your life? Is he the one that hung the stars? Is he the one that made the worlds? Is he the one that made man and women after his own image, male and female? Right? Or is he just one that saved you and told you to sit on the back back row and enjoy the show? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. He's got a gift for you. You've got a gift. You've got a talent. He's got something for you to do. Dig in. Enjoy it. Why am I telling you this? Because it's how God works his people, too. And you can't outgive God. He bless you when you bless other people. When you do bless God, he's going to bless you. Hey, man, our Father loves us. Our Heavenly Father loves us. We're talking about the wrath of God. That ain't, that ain't for us, his children. Recognize that fact. We children of the light. Don't you think we ought to act like it most of the time? I'm not going to try and tell you that I don't sin. I sin daily. Paul said he sinned. The only one man ever, 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 ever that was without sin. That's Jesus Christ. If you think you're self-righteous, if you think you're okay, that's more than likely the chance when you is really not okay. Just look at what's going on out there. Do not let people tell you that you're okay. You still need Jesus. You'll always need Jesus. Uh, all the ebbs and tows that, that we have, flows that we have in, in this life. You know, uh, if it was up to me, I'd be on a mountaintop worshiping God and have him filled in my life every second of every day. That's just not how this life goes. I don't understand everything. It's, it's, it's a mystery. God says that the mysteries of this world and later will be revealed to us at a time. Because in a twinkling of an eye, we'll be made just like him. Now, we won't be Jesus, but we'll be able to understand the whole thing of what God has done and see what our life has been and what purpose we have had in trying to be light, in light in a really, really dark world. So we're not to avoid contact with sinners, but we're not supposed to fall in and be sinners. You know, I smoke for, forever and ever and ever, and uh, I'm not justifying it, but I don't know how many times I quit, too. And it only took one little puff of a cigarette. Oh, man, I, I can still taste that Marlboro light. Maybe if they wasn't $8, I'd smoke again. No, bad on my lungs. Uh, but, man, that had a hold on me, and I quit. I don't know how many times, but I always went back to it. I quit twice for a year each. And I remember we, we had a car that broke down, and, and I'm away from back from the beach. And I, I was tore up. I was tore up. It was late, dark on the interstate. Had Darlene, both kids with me. And my, anyhow, my brother-in-law came two hours later because it was a long way. And with his roll back, and the first thing I'd done, I reached in his pocket and got a cigarette. I was back on it. Listen, listen. Hang tight with the Lord. Hang tight with the Lord in everything. Let's try to keep unity. Well, let, let, let's try to produce change. Let's don't pollute the change that's happening and endanger the unity and the love and the purpose of Christ's church. We shine as light to a dark world. So, well, Mike, I just don't feel very light, much like light now. Try. I told you this a year, a year and a half ago. Sometimes we just got to fake it till we make it. Now, I'm not trying to say be a hypocrite. I'm trying to just say hold on to one verse in the Bible. Hold on to one thing God done. And the one thing you really need to remember is when he saved you and just keep that on your mind. When you think of other things, out, just say, God saved me. Jesus saved me. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus Christ 
child. He's got plans for me. I love Jesus. Just let, I love Jesus. If the kids can sing the song, a little silly song like that, you put that song in your mind. Keep it simple. Focus on one thing till you can. Sometimes I've been so down and out and distraught that I couldn't, I couldn't hardly pray. I couldn't hardly read my Bible, and I've just sat there and let my spirit come in with God's spirit, looking at the pages. And then God's just stepped back in in a mighty way, and he's just fixed things. He was working all the time. So just hang in there. Hang in there. You're going to make it. Y'all were made for times like this. God tells you that you made for times like this. Okay. We're almost there. Well, not almost there, but, but it, won't, it won't be much longer, I promise. You know, I remember one time it says, those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. I believe that. I also believe that we need to learn from our mistakes and make an earnest effort not to repeat <coughs> that uh, the same sin that we're, we're, we, we've done before. Just remember the consequences to it and who it hurts. Yeah, it hurts your family, but it also hurts your church family. It hurts God's church, and it hurts God that we're making negligent of his son's salvation on the cross. Mm. Be careful. Okay, grieving the Holy Spirit, we've got to be children of the light. Now, Mike, so, so how can we be children of the light? Well, you're children of the light because of what Jesus did. The more spirit-filled you get, the, uh, the, the more chill light you're going to produce. And so, and, and I, know, I know a lot of people, they, they, they struggle with this, but you can always uh, get blessed more by God. I, I see some people, they don't have much materialized, but man, they have been blessed spiritually by God. They've got a contentment, they've got a happiness and a joy, a deep love, a joy of God where we're, I, I, I don't understand how, but it's God. The older I get, the more I understand it. Some of you young people are thinking, man, he's just he's lived forever. You know, uh, maybe one day, just hang in there. God's going to show you the victory that he'll put in your life as well. Uh, the first thing is you're being obedient. You want to come to church. You want to hear his word. Let Christ speak to you. Let him save you. Okay. Living by God's spirit power. Paul was speaking in urgency because of evil, evil's permissiveness in this time. And even in the good church of Ephesus 2,000 years ago, well, he was talking evil because it was all around the church people. It got in the church a little bit too, just a little bit. It's still here. There's still evil being taught. Uh, I'm not going to tell you to turn the TV on. I'm going to tell you, Leave it off and pick your Bible up. That's that's about what I've had to do here lately. Uh, it, it 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 scares some people. It just makes me mad, and and we can't we can't afford to be mad, and and not be able to have the word for Jesus Christ and, and love people the same way Jesus loved us too. I was telling somebody else, I had a liberal encounter, and told them absolutely not. You know, I said this is a battle between good and evil. Oh, no, 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 no. We're all God's children. I said, no, we're all God's creations. God loves everybody. And he gives us a choice. <clears throat> but the ones that follow him are his children. Yeah, the ones that follow him are, are his children. The ones that are saved are his children. The ones that deny him have grieved the Holy Spirit. And they're, guess whose children, right? They're the evil children. They're, 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 the, chi they're the children that we just read about. They're going to endure the wrath of God. Well, I don't want nothing to be part of that, okay? I know you don't need it. So don't be divisive. Have unity. And this goes for all of us because they, they can run our life with those attitudes. Be filled with the Holy Spirit because that's what saves our life. That's what is keeping your life going for God. We can get high on life. We can have better joy, higher and longer lasting. Joy and God's Spirit can help to cure our anxiety, our depression, God's Spirit helps us through life. It eases monotony. It gives us a sense of belonging. You know, everything don't have to be excitement, excitement, excitement. What happens to just the feeling of contentment that knowing you are God's children and you're doing what God wants you to? Don't worry so much about how much of the Holy Spirit you have, but how much of us 
How much of us the Holy Spirit has? Okay, so how much power does God have over your life? Does it have power over Sundays? Does it have power over 9 to 10 in the morning, Monday through Saturday, Sunday? That'd be awesome. Uh, does he have power over your evening devotions? That'd be awesome too. Does he have power over you when you're praying to eat? Or 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 is it a relationship and, and we we're, you're talking to God all the time? And you're aware of all the time that he's watching you. And, and you're aware that, that it does impact him because you come to a church. You tell people you're Christians. So we've got to act like it, right? Okay, let's get in the third part. This is talking, I'm going to talk about spirits, but I ain't talking about God's spirit right now. Verse 16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Paul's talking about this 2,000 years ago. Folks, there have always been adversity and suffering in this time. Since the Garden of Eden and man, man introduced sin. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 18 says, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Ooh, yeah, we were just talking earlier about how special music is. Absolutely. Music opens up our heart to God. Uh, it does. Now, let's go back up to verse 18, says, and it says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Yes, this is King James Bible here. Um, if your version doesn't relay the same message, you need to pick up mine. You need to pick up God's message in the King James Version. I ain't knocking your version of your Bible. This is what I'm going to use, but it's got to say that right there. It says, Be not drunk with wine. If you're drunk with wine, you're drunk. I've been drunk. I wish I hadn't, but I've been drunk plenty. And it's excess. Yeah, when you don't remember how you get home, when you uh, stagger and walk, you can't drive a vehicle, it's excess. But be filled with the spirit. Now, we used to call them spirits when I was a kid. Go out there and get me some of them spirits. 80 proof, 100 proof, 151, I don't know what it was. But I don't look back fondly on them times. Uh, hurt myself more than anybody else, but I did hurt other people. You say, well, how, how does that hurt other people? Well, hurt my mama. She's worried about me all the time. Uh, and I hurt myself when I wrecked, wrecked the Jeep a couple of times. And there's just a better way. There's a better way. The things of this life that does not help our walk with Christ are excess. I don't think bad language has any place in the church. I don't think that um, sexual immorality has any place in the church. Uh, why? Because God said it. That's why. And God says also that don't don't be drunk. Don't don't be drunk. It's got no place. Well, see, everybody is watching us. They're not just watching me. And uh, and that's that's okay because here's the point we need to get to where we realize. That, yeah, people are watching us, but God's watching us all the time. Okay, so be spirit-filled, be light, and don't grieve the Holy Ghost. You know, I, you're talking about the children of the lost grieving the Holy Ghost. Well, I am. However, we can grieve the Holy Spirit, not to damnation, but to the point where God recognizes that we ain't completely his yet. For what he's done for us, Man, we owe him everything, don't we? Don't you owe him everything? I, we owe him everything. If we are silent about Jesus Christ, and I'm through, we're seriously. If we are silent about Jesus Christ, are we keeping somebody away from salvation in heaven? Think about that. You say, well, well, God will have another person. How do you know that? What if it's your job now to witness to somebody, family member? That girl that, that looked at me like that. You think people don't look at me like I'm crazy? I've been looked at like I'm crazy my whole life. I'm not hurt. Matter of fact, I thought, wow, Lord, this is what your word says. They're going to think of you as a peculiar people, a zealot. But I know the truth, and I'm so thankful that God's given me the truth. I'm getting thankful that God's given you the truth. And his is what we need to pray. praise. We may be denying the lost 
of knowing who Christ is if we don't witness to people, if we don't walk right. Okay? This is not scripture. This scripture is not bleak. It's not detrimental. It's not derogatory. It's uplifting because of the promises where God said. Hey, all he tells us is wake up, wake up. Oh, you've just been sleeping. I'm giving you a new start today. Arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. So children of God, if you've been asleep, nap time's over, your slumber's over, your hibernation's over, it's time to get busy for what God has set for you to do. We can't deny them the power of God to save sinners. We've got to hold the line for Christ even in these times. There's always been evil times. There's always been worrisome times. Has this been the worst one in your life? Quite possibly, yes. But as far as history and God's world is, they've always been here. Us older folks have gone through some of these times. We remember, you young people in your 20s or 30s, you have not. You don't know. This is going to give you experience. This is going to build your endurance. This is going to give you patience. This is going to give you a reflection to who God really is. And next week, we're going to talk about what God's purpose is for allowing adversity in my life. We're going to have, I will try not to go too far and chase rabbits, but I'm probably going to go about four or five different places in the Bible and cut out, cut out with about five different uh, times where God and how he deals with the, his people during times of adversity. Hold the line. Submit yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Draw constantly on his power. Never let go from it. Mm. I remember Romans 8, 20 says, In all things, God works for our good. If we love him and are called by him, thank God not for your problems, but for the strength he gives you to get through them problems. <laughs> thank God that even though there is a storm, he gives you the power to get out of that storm. It wasn't just Peter that walked on water. You've been in some storms in your life too, and God's always got a hand there to pull you back out of these difficult times. Live in the light of Jesus. Hold right what's true and right for God. Keep the spirit of unity and love always. We don't need to act like the world. We need to act like the Christians that we've been forgiven with love always with an answer for men. Because we're, our goal is to please him, the one that died for us. So pleasing God, we please ourselves with the joy and the blessing and the power that he gives us to live this life. You, can, you can't out bless God. You can try, but you can't. God bless you. Thank you for uh, tuning us in today. You know, the sun's coming out now. Next week, we, we're going to have church. Uh, I always say that, but I, I do believe it. Um, God bless you. Remember, I, I, I may doze, but I'm never closed. If you need us, reach out to us. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we do love you. We, Lord, we thank you that we are children of the light, that you've given us your power, and we've got a glimpse of your glory and your spirits in us. Lord, help us to never grieve your spirit, God. Oh, Lord, we we, we do sin. We mess up, and, and please forgive us, Lord, but help us to not make that a pattern of our life, Lord. Don't don't let any of these these poor cheap these these people slip down, Lord, and get caught up in the snares of the evil one. Lord, help us all, me included, all of us, the leaders of the church, every member of our church, every person out there, that we pray, Lord, that you'll lead them stronger and stronger and stronger. Have us to have a time, Lord, that we can witness and tell people uh, of you of how important you are in our lives, Lord, and that we can add to our story how we led, we led somebody else to call upon the name of Jesus, the only one they can say. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bye-bye.